this is Mark David, guys. All right, so, why don't you take it away? So, so uh, okay. yeah, take it away. Yeah, well, so uh, this is a little configuration of our virtual environment. We want to show you that we can change some of the parameters of our world and some of the parameters of our car. So let's play with the world a little bit first. I'm just going to just do a few fun little changes and move the sun. Let's bring it down, make it a little closer to a sunset. Get a nice little glare off the road. Uh, and one of the things I love to do, we can't do on planet Earth, but we can do in our simulator. Let's move the sun this way. <laughs> we can cast shadows across the road. That plays a lot of havoc with sensors sometimes, or cast them the other way. Or put a nice big glare in the driver's <laughs> eyes. A nice specular highlight coming off the road. And as you, as you know, one of the things that LiDARs and cameras are most scared of is direct sunlight. Okay, all right, next. Okay, so that's our environment. Let's, uh, let's jump over and configure our car. Now we're looking out, the, if you look on the right side of the screen, we got four cameras hooked up to our car, and we're looking out the front camera right now. Let me run over and uh, play around with that front camera a little bit. Uh, so first of all, I could simply move it anywhere I want to in the environment. Over the driver's side, over the passenger side, maybe I want it toward the front of the grill of the car. And maybe maybe uh, you're using exactly the same chassis and the same computing platform, but the design, the industrial design of the car is a little different, and so the placement of the camera is a little different. And before you go and build that clock car, you would like to be able to configure the cameras accordingly and run quick simulations to make sure that against the billions of miles that you already collected up, it's going to work. That's right. And uh, let's move over here and... Let's configure one of the other sensors. Here's, uh, here's my right-hand camera. Okay, one second. Right now it's uh, focused uh, almost directly to the side of the car, but I might want to look a little further toward that blind spot toward the rear of the car. I can simply rotate that camera and boom, I'm looking at the rear of the car. Okay, that's cool, let's run it. Okay, now that's our environment. Let's run the simulator. Okay, remember this is the simulator, and that is the NVIDIA drive. Now, remember this, because the architecture of NVIDIA drive and the architecture of that supercomputer is identical, it's binary exactly the same. So we could take the entire software stack that runs on this and run it inside that software in the loop. Does that make sense? Okay, this is one of the great things that we can do as a result of using an architecturally thoughtful approach to developing the self-driving car. All right, go. All right, on this side is the simulator. On that side is the car driving by itself inside the simulator. The entire stack is exactly the same. It detects lanes, detects cars. Detects lanes, cars, signs. Basically exactly the same software stack. Okay, Mark? And once again, one of the beauties of the uh, simulated world is we can set up some uh, kind of dangerous situations you do not want to do on the, on the real road. We got our friend merging here. No! Whoa. <laughs> okay, that was we close. Can, that was we close. can see that our auto drive hit the brakes as this guy made a uh, not too kind move. And okay, so that's software in a simulated world. Does that software in the loop? Can you guys do hardware in the loop? Of course we can. Exactly the same software tool, exactly the same software stack. We're now simply going to replace the software module and slide in this hardware module. Okay. So let's switch over to uh, to see it. Okay. So now we're actually running on a drive PX2 as the hardware in the loop and the simulator. Is, uh, is showing this virtual <laughs> world. Now, uh, oh my the reason. <laughs> <laughs> we found a new driver, so we're actually interactively inside of the simulator, driving another car, manually driving another okay, car. Okay, now you can see that this is RGB. The reason why, the reason why, <laughs> hey Curtis. <laughs> the, reason, the reason why, the reason why you see it on, on this screen in orange is because the color space is different. And, and that's the beautiful thing. The fact that, that you saw it differently says that's exactly the way the drive was seeing it and the whole drive AV stack was seeing it. Uh, we changed the color, color spectrum so that we can extend our low light capability. 
Okay, so there's some colors that just simply look different, but as a result, we have much better high dynamic range. And so Curtis is basically driving the car in the simulator, and drive is responding to it over here. You see, every time Curtis gets in front, our automated driving system applies the brakes. Meanwhile, we continue to stay in the lane and uh, mind our own business and continue to drive while Curtis enjoys himself. <laughs> And so what you're seeing here